Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to test drive the new intelligent bandsaw from Harvey Woodworking Tools, the A15. It's incredible. The bandsaw comes packed in this beautiful box, really, really, really well packed. You could see that big piece of foam on top, which I'm going to recycle into something else. But all these plywood panels are on there. I'm going to use them for something else. So the saw comes really, really well packed. And just making sure I don't pull anything off of it and just making sure there's no scratches or dents. It seems like it came in perfectly, no problems. Up close look and I could see this nickel plated plate. A lot of Harvey's new tools come nickel plated, which means no rust. Whether it's humid out or rainy out, you're not gonna get a rusty table. And now this is the big eye fence, very similar to the one on my table saw, which I'm gonna show in just a second. And now that's the computer and everybody wants to know what the computer is going to be used for. We're going to see that in just a minute. And this is the fence parts that get attached to the table. Everything is really well engineered, really well thought through, and beautiful finish on everything. And now this is the roller guide. This helps push material into the fence. And it's universal. It can be used on the table saw or it can be used on the band saw. I demo it at the end. And here you see me putting the digital screen on. And it goes on real easily, just a few screws. I was impressed the screws were in place where they belong versus in a little bag, which I thought was very cool. Just simple installation. You just plug the jacks in. You can't get it wrong. I'm excited to turn this on and see what happens. Now, this is the big eye fence. This is a really, really innovative it's the type of thing you don't see lately. Nobody really innovates on these old standard ways of doing things. Harvey's done a really good job at bringing new life to these old standards. Here you see the fence that's on my saw stop. Same method, new technology for stopping and rolling. Really precise, beautiful piece of equipment. And here I'm just adjusting it to the, to the bandsaw table. Just making sure I got it in the right spot. And putting the blade on. The saw came with a three quarter inch blade. Kind of more for resawing and not typically my type of stuff for scrolling, but I, I make it work. And just the interior of this thing is a work of art. It is absolutely beautiful. Now I'm turning it on for the very first time. Good enough is not enough. <laughs> that word was a pleasant surprise. Once you get past the warning, you see the three dials. The one I just pointed at on the extreme left is your tension. And it's the question I get asked the most is, where should I set my tension? With this dial on the digital readout, you don't have to ever worry about that. You just dial it somewhere in the mid range and you're good. The middle dial gives me the tilt on the table, which right now is at zero. I'm just getting familiar with the controls right there. I do a better explicit demonstration in just a minute. And there you see me just rotating that, it tilts the table. And that on the extreme right is your speed. And I'm turning it on for the very first time right here all the adjustments are by hand. You do not need any Allen keys to adjust any of these, which for me has always been a big plus. And now here's some of my first resaw cuts. Actually, the very first resaw cut I've ever done on the saw is right here, right now. And it cuts beautifully. Paper thin on this hemlock, which is just leftover stock that I had sitting around. It's a cross cut. At the end, I'll do it with the grain cut. And it's just so nice, like slicing bread. It really, really cuts beautifully. And a lot of people always wonder why you would get drift. There's no drift at all in this blade at all. Drift, I think, is mostly, in my opinion, due to a dull blade. So if you do get drift, it's most likely a dull blade. Even a brand new blade could have its own personality, is what I always say. Right out of the box, a blade could have its own personality, which which mean it might veer to the left, it might veer to the right. So sometimes it might behoove you before you really start trying to dial in all the, the adjustments on the saw is just to try a new blade first straight away. And if you get the same results, then you know it's the saw. But when things start acting very strange, in my experience, a lot of times it's the blade. And now here I'm just showing you how paper thin you can get on that. There it is, you can see through it. You can see how wet this wood was. I try to dry these out to make a lampshade, but they got all cracky. And now this is my big test. I got this big fat blade on here. I'm going to try and cut out the Harvey logo, which I just hand drew freehand. And then I use the straight edge to just clean up my hand lettering. Now with a big thick blade like this, what I try and do straight away is just knock out all the big stuff. And since this had such an aggressive tooth on it, maybe a four tooth per inch for resawing, 
I was able to use the front of that tooth the way a chainsaw sculptor would use. Use those front teeth to cut sideways. You see right there where I'm just kind of nibbling away inside the bottom there. And whenever I have a Sharpie line on a letter form, I just, as long as I keep the Sharpie line for 90% of it, and then if I have to make up for a mistake, I cut away the Sharpie line. That's always my, that's always my safety zone. If I leave the Sharpie line, I still have time to make, I still have room, I should say, to make an adjustment or to fix a mistake. Now the hardest part of this particular letter form was getting inside that R. And you see the blade was just a little fat, but I was able to nibble by backing into it and going into it forwards. A lot of times you can get what you need by backing onto the blade, and a lot of people don't realize that. Now this is a method I've always used to keep the front of my material clean. Usually I'll have a pencil sketch on there and to scrape it off I go backwards. And it's a way of removing material without actually digging into the cut. And just as a resaw test, I resaw the actual whole word Harvey. And you get nice beautiful results, especially on this dry hemlock. You get a nice clean cut, no drifts, none whatsoever. And here you go, you have the Harvey word and double and now I'm going to do a little trickery this is an old sign makers trick just take that and spray paint it and obviously you have a stencil but what I'm going for here is a little drop shadow and you glue that behind your letter and you get a drop shadow and it looks nice you get a little Harvey logo drop shadow The high speed is 4300 and that's what that readout gives you right there. But we're going to do a test. We're going to change to the other set of pulleys. You loosen the motor, pick it up. It gives you some more room to move the pulley. And then you drop the motor back as you see. And now those two sensors, one reads one speed, one reads the other. So now you're at 2300. And that's in case you want to put maybe a metal cutting blade on or just slow the cut down for some reason or another. So you have those two positions. Now here I am. I'm going to go for another test. This is one big fat piece of wet hemlock and I've cut the top off and now I've cut the back off and you can see that now and then I'm going to get rid of that big core piece right there put that aside and now this big core piece I slice off and I'm going to make three corbels just a simple way of making a fat shelf and here this is my lame attempt at trying to do something fancy it just ended up looking kind of Fred Flintstoney but I use that same shape, I just freestyled the first one and then used it as a template for the others. And then they were a little chunky, so I cut some airspace out of the back. This is just me just improvising on the spot. And there you go. And then I take it all over and I glue it all together. And this is uh, type on quick and thick. And since this wood was so wet, you could see the moisture in the wood. This would take a few days to actually cure. And there you just have a, a shelf all made from one piece of wood with the help of a kick-ass bandsaw. You could really dig into it and get it all out of one chunk of wood. And now I want to show you that there's a light also on the touch screen. You could turn that on and off. But I also want to show you that middle dial will give you the degrees in which the table is pitched. Now here you can see more up close how that table will pitch. And then if you want to maintain a zero, you can go in there and you could set your zero. You check it and then there's your zero. I'm actually at 90 so the zero is the zero but you could always change that. And now I'm just going to play around and sculpt a spoon. Just going to freestyle a spoon here with a few little guides. And I show you some of those same techniques. There you see my Harvey dust collector in the back. And now there's a lot of dust on the saw. I don't have the dust collector going because they have the same plug. I only have one 220 volt plug in this section of the shop. So I don't want that to be a reflection. The dust collector is not going. Again, that is because I'm using the only plug to run the saw, which would also run the dust collector. It's not in its permanent spot at the moment. Eventually, all the electric will get organized, and I'll be able to run the dust collector and the saw at the same time. Sorry, Harvey. And now here, I'm just getting in there with the details, and one thing you might not be able to see from this sped up is how I'm dragging backwards. Here, you can see a little bit. 
I use those aggressive teeth by dragging the material backwards and this way I can control how much I take off. By cutting directly into the blade we all have a tendency to take off more than we really wanted and by using the blade as a rasp by dragging backwards on it you're able to dial it in a little bit closer and make better decisions slower. I also like the big fat blade because I usually ride the back of the blade a lot and I'll use it as that rasping technique but I'm putting more of my pressure on the back riding the back of the blade like a fin and there you see as far as I could take it on this blade and then I take it over to the palm sander and I palm sand it out and then just one last sweep across the mouth just to take a little bit of space off of there you never know when to stop, that's the problem. I never know when to stop. And there, I'm making a conscious decision to stop. Now here you see the universal roller guide. And you can adjust the tension of the roller wheels by turning that big red dial in the middle. And you could put it in the T-slots on the bandsaw table or on your table saw. And it flips over so you can have the unidirectional wheels they have a check in them so you can't come backwards on them and that's really good for kickback and so you could flip the entire unit up or over depending upon which direction you want those wheels to spin and there you see I've gotten a nice 1 8 inch cut in that long grain white oak it's actually red oak for you nerds that are paying close attention from Home Depot and here you see the net results of me having fun on the bandsaw for one afternoon in brief summary, we have a beautiful nickel-plated table, which will never rust. You never have to worry about that at all. This beautiful digital display, which tells you your blade tension, your table angle, and your blade speed. Unique only to this saw. Easy to use. Guides above and below the table. A light, which is always there. Beautiful tilting controls. Easy to use. Easy to read. Attention to detail, like this beautiful casting. And a digital break. So when you shut it off, it stops. Thank you, Harvey. This is a really incredible saw. It is definitely well built. It is a work of art, to be honest, with all the bandsaws I have. It's nice to see such high technology and craftsmanship in a modern saw, which has been lost over the years. But Harvey's bringing it back. Thank you, Harvey. Mm -hmm.